This is the most successful scam show of all time. A hit in 45 countries around the world. The real hustlers have stolen cars. Hi. It's perfectly safe there. Burgled houses. Picked. Switched. And ditched. Antenna for the hold on. They've carried out close to 500 scams and stolen over £1 million. And now they're back for an 11th series. Alex, Jess, and Paul, with new recruits, Polly and Jazz. Their job, to expose the tricks of the criminal's trade so that you don't get scammed. On tonight's show, the odds are stacked in Jess's favor. A gin and tonic been lovely. Gin and tonic. Thank you very much. This mark gets left offline in a computer scam. And guest hustler Gemma Atkinson plays fast and furious. I am paying you to be here to make this work for me. The marks in this show have no idea they're being hustled. They agreed the footage could be shown so that you can avoid falling for the same scams. The hustlers have invited celebrity friends to see if they can cut it as con artists. But they'll have no clue what the scam is about and there are no dress rehearsals. So this is Sink or Swim. Today's guest hustler is former Hollyoaks star and Lads Mag favourite, Gemma Atkinson. I'm hoping I've got the qualities to be a good hustler. I've got the acting down, that's fine. I just always kind of feel bad for people. I don't really like lying to anybody. I always like to be honest. Today I have no clue what I'm doing at all. I'm excited, I'm nervous, I'm kind of curious, and uh, hopefully it won't be anything too, too dangerous. Gemma's been dropped off at an iconic landmark, the Falkirk Wheel, where Alex is waiting to give her a thorough briefing. Hello. Hello. You okay? I'm good, come in. Thank you. Rather Humble strange boat. boat. Hi, I'm Alex. Nice to meet you. Have yeah. a seat. Thank you. So you're probably wondering what we're doing today. Yes, I uh, very much am, yeah. Well, today involves about four or five high performance cars. Brilliant. That we're gonna get away with. We're gonna pinch the cars? Oh yeah. It's gonna be a bit like Fast and Furious. We're yeah. gonna have to be very fast and you're gonna have to get furious. Okay, that's fine. All right. I can get you worried. And like with any heist, we need our sort of secret weapon. Well, our weapon's not so secret because we're actually sitting in it. Okay? okay. We're going to use this barge to get away with four very high performance vehicles. This, this one. This, this one. little one. <laughs> this little one. And that massive wheel out there. But uh, come with me and I'll tell you all about it. All right. Come on. This is interesting. It is. Well, it's going to be fun. So Gemma's about to get involved in a real-life game of Grand Theft Auto in The Wheel Deal. The Falkirk Wheel is the world's only rotating boat lift, connecting the Forth and Clyde canals to the Union Canal and the rest of the country. The impressive scenery is the perfect backdrop for today's scam. A fake commercial being filmed by a company called TRH Productions. The ad's all about slick design, so the team have arranged to hire a top-of-the-range Ferrari for the shoot, and Alex and Jazz are in position to welcome the driver. The, uh, the coaches, yep. if you pull in this car park here, and then there'll be a guy there who's part of that shoot. All right, lovely car, by the way, mate. <laughs> That's Donking Motors, a Ferrari 360 Spider, worth a cool £100,000. Alex is playing the commercial's producer. That guy driving the Ferrari is the first mark. Right. Hi, Ian. Ian, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Yeah. Hi, thank you. And here comes Gemma, playing the most difficult client in the history of advertising shoots. And already, she's not looking too happy with that gorgeous sports car. 
Ian? Okay. Yeah, I'm just coming, Lee. This isn't going to work, Ian. Okay. Have a seat here for me. Worries, Have a seat. Oh, I'm, I just need to. Alex is just about to get his first earphone. It's going to work. I think it looks fine. Don't you think? Because we're going to have the shot here. No, Ian. And we've got the, the beautiful view of, of this. Of this... grey. The picture of... you sent, sun was beaming, sky was blue. It looked great, yeah? Well, I can't do anything now, about the weather. I mean... The weather can't change, but the shot can. I arranged for you to get more than one car. OK, is this the only car that can come? Or can well, you get more? Well, no. I mean, we, we, we agreed on one car. No, but... I am paying you to be here to make this work for me. No, I understand that. So we need more than one car. The strop immediately gets the mark's attention. I'm paying you to do your job. I don't know if I can get more cars here. In... If you Louis... can't get more cars within three hours, then it's finished. What's the point? I'm not wasting any more time on money. All right. Uh... What's the poor harass producer going to do now? Sorry about this. Uh... I'll arrange it myself, it... Ian, if oh, it can no, be it's, done. All, it's all right. I'll handle it. Um, is, is it... Do you think it would be possible at all... Um to get three more cars down here by quarter past two. Could you call your boss maybe and find out whether that is possible? And then we need the cars not up here because we're going to change the location. Right, yeah. We're going to put them all the way down by the visitor centre. I'll rope off Which, an area Which, believe it or not, you. is what we agreed on. Yeah. Uh, you won't believe that. Would that be OK? Yeah, can you, can you make yeah. a call and I check can, for yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, no, that's absolutely fine. The car has come from a supercar hire company and the Mark goes off to ask his boss if any more cars are available. They're looking for four top-of-the-range sports models and they need them now. If you tell them to come after lunch, please, Ian, because I okay. need to get things sorted, I need to now email my people and tell them it's changing again. OK, all right. We're going to get everything sorted. Nice to see Gemma's throwing herself into the role. We don't need this car here right now. No, so you can, you can go back. Excuse me, did you say you had a Lamborghini? Yes, you said you had a Lamborghini. Yeah, yes. Cue the commercials director. It's Paul, who's also just about to get an earful from his obnoxious client. It's perfect. She, she's not happy. What's wrong with it? She wants more cars, which this you gentleman... Do you want me to switch your ear off? Uh, oh, I'm Rob, how are you doing? Rob, nice to meet you. He's um, taking care of the... I'm going to confirm 100% we're going to get more than one car. Yes, I think that... Uh, uh, we're, four. We're, four, four and uh, they'll be here at quarter cars, past yeah. two. Definitely. What is she talking about? Well, she wants. She now wants four cars here, quarter past two, and also I need to let you. No, some, else, no, no, I need no, to no, let no, you no. know about something else. The location's changed as well. She wants to shoot everything down there. Gonna... Gemma starts laying into him. It's our plan because everything. I don't is... care how long it takes to set it up. It needs to look right. Listen, it's all Doesn't about style. Doesn't matter if it takes a long time I, you, you know, to set it's up. A tricky client. Oh, sure. Quite feisty. Well, Thank great. you so much, and, and thanks also for arranging for the other oh, cars. Good. You've yeah, yeah, you've saved my skin actually. No problem. Thank you. All right. But the Mark has saved Alex's bacon. He's managed to organise four more cars to turn up later. Alex and Jazz set up further down the road, making room for those new cars. Now we'll just wait for the growling noise. Giving Gemma and Paul just enough time to set up a makeshift production office in a room the team have hired for the afternoon. Job done. And right on cue, the unmistakable growl of expensive sports car fills the air. True to his word, the first driver has sent along four of his colleagues. That's four brand new marks to con in four new motors. Can you back it up? First up, a shiny red Ferrari 430. It's worth a cool £170,000 and is being driven by the first new mark. Next up, a sleek black Lamborghini. Gemma will be pleased. Costing over one hundred and seventy grand. Its driver is our second mark. Got the sound of that engine, it's brilliant. <laughs> a souped up Ford Rally Championship racing car worth £45,000. The driver is our next mark. And finally, our fourth and final mark is driving that Porsche Turbo 911, a snip at £120,000. Together, this haul of cars is worth more than half a million pounds. 
This is the biggest money heist the hustlers have ever tried to pull off. Uh, guys, can I ask you to follow me? Alex is keen to get on with the scam, but the safety conscious marks make sure they lock up those prize motors before leaving the car park. So right now, the hustlers have over 500 grand's worth of cars in their sights, but they're all locked and the four drivers are keeping a very close eye on them. How on earth are the hustlers going to pull off their biggest scam ever? Coming up... A boat trip these Marks and Gemma won't forget in a hurry. Oh, uh, I really need yeah. to get off. So I'm going to be sick if I don't get off. Plus the biggest getaway ever attempted on The Real Hustle. When hustlers go out, they don't take money. They take prop bets. <laughs> the proposition bet has only one rule, and that's that the hustler always wins. So I've got a challenge for you, a fun challenge. Um, now, you'll be able to relate to this. You know our men are quite bad at guessing sizes, aren't Absolutely, they? Yeah. You know what I mean? You two will agree, I'm sure. So this one's for you. <laughs> so I've got with me, I've got 11 10 pence pieces here. Yep. Uh, normal 10 pence pieces, just going to stack them up like that. And in my other hand, I've got some coins, which I'm going to lie them out. I've got um, a two pound coin, 10 pence piece, five pence piece, two pence piece, 50p, and a one penny. Okay. Just buying out like that. The challenge is, you need to pick the coin from this line here, yep. that on its side will be the same height as this stack of 11 tempered pieces. Okay. Now if you can do that, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> well done. If you can't, you buy me a drink. Is that a deal? It's a deal. Wicked. Sounds simple enough. Jess's new friend needs to pick the coin that, when standing on its side, will be the same height as a stack of 11 coins. You look like you sort of know the Sorry. answer already, which is scaring me a little bit. Go on then, which one are you? Uh, the two pound coin. The two pound coin? Yeah, yeah. Do you think on its side that's going to be the same height? I think it's quite bigger, yeah, it's the biggest one. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put that on its side. It's actually not. It's actually quite <laughs> a lot bigger yeah, yeah. than the no, ten pence yeah. pieces. Yeah. Not to worry, I am going to give you another go. Okay. So which one do you think now? The two pence. Also quite big, that one. Yeah, it's probably the big, second yeah. biggest one. <laughs> so let's have a little look. Yeah. That also is too high. Oh. I'm afraid you still picked too big. Tell you what, third time lucky, I'll give you another go. See yeah. what I mean, men are just so bad at getting sizes. I apologise, I apologise. You, you're thinking it's, um, it's smaller than what it is. <laughs> okay, okay wrong, 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 wrong combo, wrong combo. So, has to be the 10 pence. If you'd have guessed this at the, at the, at the, at the start, start. Yeah, yeah, it should have been it. Um, you'd actually have lost. <laughs> I'm afraid it's still too big. Again. Tell you what, I'll put you out of your misery. Shall I show you which one it yeah, is? Yeah, please do, yeah. Okay, if I was to tell you it was the one pence, what would you say? No chance. You'd say no, way too no, small. Way no too, too small, yeah. Way too small. Okay, well, let's have a little no go. <laughs> it's actually no. the exact same height <laughs> as the ten pence pieces. You wouldn't have guessed that no, one, would no, you? It's deceiving, really yeah. deceiving, yeah. So you'd have thought all the other ones apart from that? Yeah. Well, um, a gin and tonic would be lovely. Gin and tonic? Thank okay, you very much. This is a smart hotel in the centre of Edinburgh. But this guy isn't checking in. He's here to buy a cut price laptop. That makes him the mark in the double switch. The person selling the laptops is Rob Marks, and he looks a lot like Paul. Charlie, nice to meet you. Have a seat, Charlie. Uh, someone else is coming along as well. She said she'll be here in a second. Is that OK? Yeah, yeah just uh, take care of everybody at the same time. That mystery someone else is Jess. She's looking a lot more chavvy than normal, but that's all part of the scam. You Rob? Yes. Hi, sorry. Uh, Sue. Susie. How are you? I am all right, yeah. Yeah, have a seat. Sorry, have my seat. boyfriend can't actually find a place to park, so we're just waiting outside. So, dodgy looking Jess has a dodgy bloke waiting for her outside. So, um, these are, my company gives these away to clients, and so basically we have a whole bunch of them left over yeah and uh so the 200 cash but this particular model is about 500 you know if you buy it in the shop so it's, it's a pretty good deal 
Do you want to check it? Or I, mean, I probably should. Yeah. I don't know if you want to or not. <laughs> I'll um, look at you. They're the same, aren't they? Uh, yeah, they're both exactly the same. Let me open it for you. Paul explains that the laptop's a leftover client gift from his company. The Mark wants to check what's actually in the box, and Paul's happy to oblige. Sure enough, it's a brand new, high-spec laptop worth hundreds of pounds. I just like it, but it's about a year old. Okay, well, that, I think that's all right. Yeah, I mean, it's fine, you know, they all work. Do you want to have a there's little a, look at that? There's a warranty card in here. Just send that off, you can do it online, and it, it's covered right. for two years, which is excellent. So, so 200, please. Is that all the so the goods are kosher, and the mark seems happy to pay. Out comes the money. Do you mind if I check it? Is that okay? No, I don't trust you. <laughs> um, there you go. Paul checks the cash and transfers it to a new envelope. Um, this is very good. And that goes in his jacket pocket for safekeeping. Yeah. Would, you would you mind? Before I actually give you the money, can I just show it to my boyfriend outside because I don't really know much about computers and that. Is, can he come in? No, because we couldn't find a place to park, could we? So can he, can I just take it out to him now and just show it? would be like two minutes, just like literally just outside. Yeah, can I bring it out to you? Okay, I'll just go tell all him. Right. Yeah, no okay. worries. Is that all right? All right, thank you. Obviously, I want to um, show him Charlie, first. would you, could, I receive Yes, absolutely. Would you do me a favour? Can you hold that for a second? I don't want to take cash out to her, would that be okay? okay Paul clearly thinks Jess looks well dodgy. He's unhappy about meeting some stranger in a car park and asks the mark to keep hold of his cash just in case it turns out to be a trick. After all, you can't be too careful these days. The mark waits patiently for Paul to return. Still no sign of Paul, but the Mark's so happy with his purchase, he's even chatting on the phone about it with a friend. It's okay, I check it already, all the laptops, all the budget, all the equipments, everything is perfect. A full half hour later and Paul's not back yet. The Mark's still chilling though, he's got his laptop, he's looking after the cash. What could possibly go wrong? Maybe he can surf the web to kill some time. Or can he? So what's really going on? Earlier, Jess timed her entrance perfectly from her stakeout in the cafe next door. Once Paul had the Mark's cash, he transferred the money into another envelope. Jess distracted him with her cock and bull story about her boyfriend and Paul made the switch by replacing the envelope containing the Mark's cash with an identical one filled with bits of newspaper. Paul then walked out with the real laptop, meeting Jess outside. All they had to do was pop into a nearby cafe until everything had blown over. Is that pepperoni? Uh, no, I think it's just cheese. <laughs> that box looked convincing. It really contained a pack of cheap printer paper. But the Mark still thought he had that envelope of cash that Paul left with him. But after a quick peek inside, he couldn't believe his eyes. Instead of crisp £20 notes, it was stuffed with newspaper. And the realisation that he'd been scammed hits him like a slap in the face. This all seems pretty legit. The Mark has seen a laptop coming out of its box and naturally assumes that the other box is identical. Whenever buying anything privately, be aware that con artists are experts at gaining your trust and separating you from your money. Always be vigilant and remember that a deal may not be as fair as it first seems. Earlier, the hustlers took delivery of over half a million quid's worth of sleek supercars. They've arranged for them to be here for a TV commercial they claim to be filming. Guest hustler Gemma Atkinson is playing the role of the tantrum-prone client, and producer Alex and assistant Jazz are wrangling the motors. 
Right now, they're all safely locked up in the car park, and director Paul is just about to explain his artistic vision to the four marks. In The Wheel Deal, part two. When it comes to the shot, all you need to do is drive onto the boardwalk up here, but I want you to be staggered in a very specific way. And we're going to decide on the positions right now. I'm not being picky here, but we've got all this stuff, yeah? Yeah. And it's going to take ages to get up anyway. So if we get it up there and it's not right... Well, we've got what? plenty of time. No, we're not actually got shooting for a few hours. I mean, we've, we've not got, got, got time. time to come back and shoot it because of the light. So we have... Everyone's to starting to look a bit uncomfortable with all the squabbling. If it's just us who goes up, Right. And I don't well, like it, fine, I'm I don't take, want to take all Listen, this I'm going to take these guys up anyway and show well, them what I want. Well, can I come and have a look as well? Um, yeah, absolutely. The marks are being taken on a quick trip up on the wheel, so that Paul can explain the shots he's planning and show them where he'll need the cars to be positioned on the ground. Control freak client Gemma is insisting she's coming soon. I'll see you at the boat, yeah? Yeah, thank you. OK, so they have your keys so they can... because I need a camera and a couple of these. The Marks are still holding the keys to the motors, but as director Paul explains, he wants to rig some cameras inside the cars, so needs them open. So here comes producer Alex with his assistant Jazz to get them. Cameras are unpacked, we're all just waiting. All right. Can I get the keys okay. for you guys? Got them. Alex assures the drivers he's looking after those prize wheels, but they're not that bothered. I'll be with the cars at all times, okay? So, I'll yeah. Be... After all, they're just going to be on the boat for a short trip and they can easily keep an eye on the cars on the way. Well, this is a boat trip with a difference. The barge starts off in an enclosed gondola, which lifts it 35 metres into the air, hoisted by that massive wheel. Once they get going, the Marks will get a bird's eye view of the car park. How long does it take? Oh, it's hot. You are right. They've only just set off, but grumpy client Gemma seems to be uncomfortable already. This is where I want the first car to come in. So the first car we'll see. Director Paul gamely explains what he needs the drivers to do during the shoot. Gemma's still not looking happy. The wheel's getting higher and higher and she's going greener and greener. Will it jump off the thing? I just need a bathroom. Listen, it just goes down here, turns around and comes back. I know, but it's I very, just feel very really gentle. She really is looking sick as a parrot. Can Paul arrange an emergency yeah, stop? Let me go and have a quick word back here. Is it possible for the lady that's with us to get off? Yeah, that was very important. What we'll do is we'll just go through and we'll go to the side. You go to the side? No, I really need yeah. to get off. So I'm going to be two, sick yeah. if I don't get off. I really no, need no, to no, get it off. has to be down there. I'm sorry, s***, <laughs> dude, here. Oh, God. All right, I'll stay with you. It's all right. Just, um, just... I feel so sick. All right, just take it easy. All right, I'm going to take her off and take her down to the thing and meet you on the other side. It's not a scheduled stopping point, but they managed to negotiate an early exit. Paul explains to the Marks that for health and safety reasons, they'll have to stay put for now. Right, so I'll be back in 10 minutes. What do you want to eat tonight? I mean, what's, what's good? Any Indian food? Shut up, I'm talking about food. Paul promises to come back once he's deposited Gemma safely back on dry land. Guys, I'll see you in 10 minutes, all right? All right, thank you. And she's off, swiftly followed by director Paul, who puts a caring arm around her shoulder. The marks seem less sympathetic. All right, so I'm gonna send you down the hill a little bit while okay. they can watch me. All right, so just keep on going down there. But here's the thing, that was the last chance to get off this boat. The Marks are now going for the scenic tour, whether they like it or not. They're now stuck on that boat for the next 25 minutes. Once inside the tunnel, the Marks can no longer see the cars, and Jazz cues the final part of the scan. They've all entered the tunnel on the boat, we're ready to cue the van now. We need to get the van down here now so that we can load up the cars. With the Marks now out of sight, it's safe for Paul to catch up with Gemma. Now that's one heck of a getaway vehicle, specially hired for the day by the Hustlers. Gemma and Paul join Alex and Jazz for their first glimpse of all those cars. If I had to pick one, it'd be Porsche. Porsche, I think. Yeah. How much time we got? Um, probably got about 20 minutes. 
20 minutes is not a lot of time to get the cars onto the transporter before the marks complete their journey. Blissfully unaware that anything untoward is going on, the marks are quite literally in the dark, with no clue that their prize motors are being nicked from right under their noses. One by one, the cars are loaded onto the transporter. Meanwhile, the marks have reached the halfway point, and the barge has turned round to make its return trip back through the tunnel. The hustlers better get a move on. This operation has to be done quickly, slickly and safely, as it's only a matter of time before the marks come out of that tunnel and we'll be able to see exactly what the hustlers have been up to. The barge finally comes back out of the tunnel. There's no sign of Director Paul. And what on earth is going on in the car park? This wasn't in the briefing. The Marks can see their prize supercars being loaded onto the transporter, and they certainly didn't give permission for that. The Marks can now see in plain sight. The cars are no longer where they left them. So what was that boat ride? Beautiful. I felt sick. Yeah. <laughs> terrible for me. But they're still on the boat. Unable to jump ship, they're completely helpless. Here they come. <laughs> Leaving the hustlers free to drive away with the biggest moneymaker they've ever managed to pull off. <laughs> well done, guys. Yeah. Makes a difference now because they've taken the cars. What cars? It's a real worry. TRH Productions seem to have closed for the day. And the hustlers have scarpered, leaving the marks with a very long bus ride home. We just went along with what we thought was a professional package. Seems legit. It's something you think that will never happen to you. It makes your blood boil. On the getaway with Paul, um, I felt great. It was relief more than anything. I just said to him, like, we've done it, and we did a little high five. I kept saying, I'm walking off, I kept saying, can they see us, can they still see us? Um, but yeah, it was just sort of relief that it, that it worked and everything was all right. If we had done this in real life, I, I, I'd have to give them back. I'd feel absolutely rotten. This is a complicated and elaborate professional scam where criminals could potentially get away with a half a million pounds worth of luxury motor cars. The message here is never part with keys to a luxury vehicle or your home or any other kind of goods unless you're completely confident of who you're dealing with. These people were strangers. Today's guest hustler is Hollyoak star and Seven Degrees North champion, actor Marcus Patrick. When you're acting, there's, there's usually other people around you that are also acting. Some of the stuff I see on the show, um, you just, it just beggars belief that it actually goes on. I just want to find out what it is so I can sort of relax and think about what I'm doing. So please tell me. <laughs> so, to put him out of his misery, Marcus has been dropped off at a local garden centre for his hustle briefing. Morning. Welcome to the Real Hustle Garden. Yeah, we stole all of this. Okay. Naturally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice uh, and spacious. Uh, Actually, today we're going to take part in a little bit of piracy. Yeah. You like pirates? I love them. And what do pirates like? Treasure. And what do they do with the treasure? They... Bury it. They bury it. Yeah. Of course they do. Usually with a map, right? Yeah. So this is a very old scam we're pulling today. Real yeah. old school stuff. Uh, one of the main principles is that uh, you will have to do um, a little bit of forced labor. Meaning? Meaning. Oh. Was this in the contract? This, uh, actually it was. Check the small print. Okay. There you go. You'll need that. Come on, I'll show you the place. We're off. So it's off to work for Marcus, who's going to have to dig deep to convince the mark in the buried treasure. A large house on a quiet suburban road. Some workmen pull up outside and go about their business. It's Paul 
Jazz and Marcus, suited and booted to do a bit of digging. There we go. They've told the house owner they're here to investigate reported water leaks in the area, but shouldn't need to bother them unless there's a problem. Do you want to start around the edge first? Yeah, st st start up just around the edge. Marcus's first role is to be in charge of the metal detector. Do that, do that, do that bit again. And he's already got a reading. There's that stop set. What have you got? Oh. There you go. Don't do it's, anything. It's every time don't, around this don't bit. Do it. Don't do anything until I've spoken to the owner, please. They can't just dig up this beautiful lawn without letting the owner know. So Paul goes to get permission. Hiya. Sorry the trouble. This lady is the owner, making her the mark. We do have something in the middle of your lawn, but it's not where the pipe should be. Have you got anything under there or? <laughs> um, it's, quite a, it's quite a dense object. Um, uh, we probably should have a look at it. Do you mind if we? So Marcus's metal detecting has shown up that there's a large object buried under the lawn, but it's the wrong shape for a pipe. 60. Do you mind if they... No. All right. As long as you put things back. I, yeah. <laughs> Take the top off and go down, yeah. So it can't be a pipe. It's too, it's too wide. Are you sure? Yeah. No, the, the pipe's supposed to run through the back here. There might be an old tributary, but that's it. Yeah. All right, let me, uh, let me see. Do you want to see what this is? <laughs> I don't know. If it's a pound coin, I'd be very surprised. It's a little bit too big. Paul leads her downstairs to investigate. Like just go down a couple of feet. If it's not a pipe, just leave it. Yeah, yeah I can definitely feel something there. Yeah. I made sure I cut it in a nice little square so I can just yeah. fill it back up for you. <laughs> yeah, it's a bomb. Oh my God! Jesus! <laughs> uh, it's not always like this. Don't get too yeah. excited. It's more exciting oh, than what, a pipe. It's not a bomb. Are you anything crazy? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> I'm going to stand back. <laughs> World War II bomb. Help well, we found one of those in our time. That's you know. definitely no water pipe. It's not a deposit box. Oh my god. Oh, there you go. Oh, a pot. The hustlers have discovered a rusty old box. This has been wet for a long time. Hi. Would you yeah. hold on to that for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Minute, <laughs> yeah. Beyond the mark's intrigued and wants to examine the contents. You know, it's very wet. Oh dear. Wow, what is that? What is that? Oh my god. Is it a picture? A pic no, it's not. It's a letter. This is quite incredible. It's, oh, wow. Oh, somebody's that is, old uh, metal. Wow. Oh, wow. Let's treat it. Let's touch it very, very carefully because you can see oh, the so water. Don't touch it then. Don't touch it then. Do oh, my favor. God. That's so gorgeous. Let me take this. Um, yeah, yeah, touch it very carefully. Right, right, let me just feel this. All right. That's crazy. Can you fill that back in for me just now and uh, give crazy. me a minute? Paul heads to the back of the garden with her to get a closer look inside. So we look at what we got here. Yeah. Yeah, this is all kind of fragile. Oh wow, that's quite emotional, isn't it? That's some just gorgeous later. Lewis Saul, Princess Street, Edinburgh. Oh, that's unbelievable. What a gorgeous find. Oh, what's that? Oh wow, it's like a wee map for hidden hidden treasure. The box also contains a map of the Mark's garden showing the lawn and some trees with pointers to a further possible hall of treasure. But how on earth did it get there? Earlier that week, Paul wreckied a number of gardens in the area. Finding no one at home, he surveyed this back garden and took notes on layout and key features. In the den, Jazz and Polly filled an old metal box with a fake letter, a black and white photograph of a couple, some vintage trinkets, and most importantly, a map with an X marking the spot of more treasure in another area of the garden. Hello. Hi, my name's Daisy. I'm calling from TRH Surveyors. Polly then made a call from a water engineering company. She wanted to check when the owner would be out. No, no, there won't be anybody in tomorrow, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's no problem. We can always contact you another time. That's what to do. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Cool. Yeah, all yeah. good. Coast clear. Paul and Alex returned to the house, sneaked around the back and buried the box beneath the lawn. Foreman Paul made sure Alex did all the hard work. Well, Let me have to, a wee look at this. I'm this is a to, map that's kind of... I'm going to take this and put it on here, right? Look at oh, please, please do, yeah. 
The mark takes the sodden box and its contents inside to dry out. And does that map relate to these trees? To my darling, keep you can and all this. Right, let me, uh, I'll be right back. On his way back down, Paul signals to Marcus and Jazz that the next phase of the scam can begin. You boys find anything else? We found that there's something here. Soon, more beeping from Marcus's metal detector has the mark's attention. There is actually. <laughs> Careful now. Careful. It's bigger than uh, that one though. But it goes from here. What do you think? It seems it's deeper. Yeah. I'll leave that. This is it. The big moment the hustlers have been building towards. The metal detector has gone off the scale. Yeah. Something else is down there, and it seems much, much bigger than the first find. There's something big over here. It's about four or five times as big, and it's deeper. Yeah. Rob, what do you want to do? Do you want us to sort no, of outline no, don't it? Dig no, don't dig that up. Don't dig that up. Because you're pointing at a tree in the wee map. There's an arrow point to a tree in the map. Oh, is there? Uh. Really? The map in the box has an X marking that exact spot in the Mark's garden. Funny, that. So, she's got the metal box with a map promising further treasure. Could this be the find of a lifetime? Maybe not. We've, you know, our company's found things like this before. Uh -huh. Is they, they tend to just take these things. Right. The only reason I know about this is that when they find claims, for example, there was a whole box of gold coins found about yeah, eight years ago, and uh, the council kept all of it. So Paul's worried the council will step in and claim the loot, meaning the mark will lose out. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if there's a connection between that box and that box, and they take that one, I'm not, I'm not sure if that means they take that also. Jazz helpfully points out that any treasure dug up by workmen must, by law, be reported to the local authorities. I'm supposed to report it tonight. I'm yeah, supposed to take it know. away, but I won't. I won't do that. I'm just deeply concerned that you'll lose whatever this is. I've been seeing this happen many times before. I just don't really want to see them digging up your garden and keeping all your stuff. So the mark might not get to keep that surprise treasure trove after all. And what was promising to be a great day is now about to turn sour. When hustlers go out, they don't take money. They take prop bets. <laughs> the proposition bet has only one rule, and that's that the hustler always wins. So I've got a little proposition bet for you guys. I'm going to use something. I've got a piece of newspaper here. You've got to balance this piece of newspaper upright like this on one hand. And you've got to keep it up there for, let's say, five seconds. But you can't roll it up, and you can't sort of fold it into like a stiff piece of paper. Do you want to have a go? So to win a drink, Alex is betting that his new friends can't balance a page of newspaper on their hands from corner to corner without folding or rolling it up. Friendly skeptical gold. Okay, okay, okay. All right, okay. Any other ideas? Like this. Okay, try, try whatever you want to try. Can't hold the top, can you? You can't keep holding the top. So, if, do you want me to let go now? No. Okay. Almost, almost. You've got to keep it up there for like five seconds at least. Okay. Oh, I mean, you you can hold it like that if you want. Why not? Yeah, go on. Let's how Paul reads. <laughs> right. Okay, for a round of drinks. <laughs> One hand, five seconds. I think I've done five seconds now, surely. Oh! <laughs> Alex proves it's easy when you know how. He doesn't need to fold it, he just snaps the page along its length to form a strong spine. The newspaper then effortlessly stands straight up on his hand for the all-important five seconds. A relaxed bar in the west end of Glasgow. But this smart couple aren't on a date. It's Alex and Jess, and it looks like these guys are here to meet them. But they're not here for drinks. 
They've been told that Alex is selling off some cheap tablet computers and they're here to buy. This makes them the marks in the splitter. Um, so it was one iPad? Oh, OK. You know, are you each going to buy one, yeah? yeah? You want another one? That's fine. Yeah. Alex opens the box in front of the marks so they can see that what they've come to buy is the real deal. But Alex and Jess already know they want two. They've deliberately only brought one. In fact, this is the key to the scam working. OK, we can, I can, if you, you've got a car here, have you? Yeah. All right, we can go we can quickly drive down to the lock-up and pick, pick another one up. Is that OK? The only thing is we need to, you need to pay for them now because then we can release them, yeah? Okay? Alex is happy to get another one from their lock-up and the first mark agrees to drive him there. But Alex wants the money first. The mark hands over hundreds of pounds. Yeah. Ooh, Alex quickly counts the cash. After all, there are lots of con artists around these days. Perfect. Yeah, okay. Thank you. You hold on to that. Put it back in that envelope. Uh, Edward, do you want to? Yeah. You've got the car. You said, yeah. Uh, let's go. Alex and the first Mark head off to the lock-up. You're not going to be long, are you? No, no, five minutes. Okay. The second Mark stays put with Jess, the original iPad and all that cash, as Alex's chauffeur takes him to his car. And off they go. Just left here. Meanwhile, Jess and the other Mark are making a little small talk. Oh, you do security? Oh, wow, whereabouts? Oh, you're a bouncer? I remember I kicked a bouncer when I was about 18. The Marks just received a text. Sorry? You OK? How was it? You're going to go out and give it a, give a, a boy thing that you do? OK. That text isn't completely accurate. It came from the first Mark's phone, but not from the Mark himself. Once they were a few streets away, Alex made up an excuse about having to collect the lock-up keys from a mate in another pub. Do you know what, we're here early and I left my mobile with Susie. Can I, have you got your mobile on you? I'll text him and just let him know that we're here early. Uh, Alex then borrowed the Mark's phone to text his mate about the keys. But what he was really doing was texting the other Mark. Back at the first bar, this guy heads outside to help his pal. I'll just go in. I'll be too sexy, yeah? Alex hands back the phone and then does a runner through the pub into a parked car. And he's gone. And suddenly, Jess also seems to have somewhere else to be. <laughs> Alex is taking ages and the first mark is getting restless. Outside the first pub, there's no sign of the broken down car. Fed up waiting for Alex, eventually the first Mark calls his mate. Are you sure that's not dodgy? He's in the pub. Where's she? Jess has disappeared along with the iPad and the cash. There. And the poor Mark is so gobsmacked, he seems to have lost the power of speech. There. She's gone. Right. What about the money, but? And it soon starts to dawn on both of them. Something's gone seriously wrong. Yeah. Alex meets Jess at a pre-arranged rendezvous point and their getaway is complete. Got money for the iPad? It's When we were separated, that's when a lot of the confusion started because I couldn't see him and he can't see me, so... And as far as he knew, I was around the corner when I was a couple of miles down the road. Planned out quite well. Uh, got the separation so, thing bang on. Taking sweets from my baby, really. Divide and conquer is a classic battle technique, and it works just as well for scammers. By separating the two marks, we create confusion and give ourselves enough time to get away before they even realize they've been scammed. The only thing you should consider buying in a pub is a pint and a packet of peanuts. You buy electronics from a retailer or a known trusted reseller. Otherwise, you're just begging to be ripped off.
Earlier today, the hustlers posed as waterbore contractors investigating leaky pipes and dug up an old metal box in this Mark's back garden. It's not always like this, don't get too yeah. excited. The box contained some vintage trinkets, a letter and an old map promising more treasure buried elsewhere in the garden. Excited at the prospect of getting to keep the booty, the mark was soon let down by Paul's insistence on having to report the find to the authorities. I've seen this happen many times before. I just don't really want to see them digging up your garden and keeping all your stuff. Paul's worried if the council step in, they'll claim the loot, meaning the mark will lose out. Maybe he's got a solution. Let me make a quick phone call. He now pretends to be asking a lawyer friend for some advice. After all, he really just wants to help the mark out. Hi, um, I, I think you remember me. This is Robert Marks. Paul's talking uh, loud enough for the mark to hear him. He seems keen for her to be able to keep the contents of the box without reporting it. It's like a pirate film. There's a, there's a map and there's, you know, there's a whole bunch of trees here. There's a bunch that are gone now, but there is a chance there might be something else. Um, but yeah, okay. Sorry. What Ian has told me is, is that you should keep everything together inside the box. I'm not touching anything that went in the box? Inside the box, so that it's all in one place. And that you should put something of yours in the box that's of equal value, because they can't take it away from you then. That's what right. he's told that's me. The great wee tip. Paul's found a legal loophole to stop the council confiscating the box and the other possible buried treasure. If the mark places something of high value in the box, she has a legal right to hold on to it because it's now storage for her valuables. That means the council can't touch it. And crucially, they won't get their hands on that map leading to the bigger buried treasure. I have to take a photograph of it to show to my boss. Um, do you mind if I take a photograph of it all in the box? Because I might get into trouble for taking it all out like that. Just see the lady done it. No, don't put it all by the box. Just see I done it. Just see the. I have to. I have to insist. Actually, I. I don't. I know how these things go. You can't insist because you're now in my house. Yeah, but that's why. Yeah, but you're now in the house. Yeah, but you know you could get me into quite a lot of trouble. Oh, don't talk nonsense. It was me who found the box and brought it up here. Look, there's the chains down here. Despite offering to help her. The Mark seems unconvinced and is getting more and more frustrated with Mr. Jobsworth and his endless nitpicking. I know it's a, I know it's a pain in the neck, but if I don't do that, I'll be quite. See, I am I, well. I mean, unfortunately, that 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 won't wash with my boss. Well, I'll speak to your boss because you're now using private property that's in here now. I'm a little lost, to be honest, because he's told me to put something of value in there and say that that's yours and nobody can take it from you. Well, I can sort that out. You do. I need to take a photograph of it. Do it then. Come on, hurry up. Um, well, what, what, what can you put in there of value? I mean, what can I that's show you? Uh, all right. Can we bring everything out and I'll take a photograph and then that way I haven't shown it in your house. I'm very, very sorry. It's bureaucracy gone mad is what it is, but... So the mark needs to put all the soaking wet and muddy items back into the box so Paul can take a photo. But to make the find hers, she has to put in an item of value of her own, along with the historical artefacts. Now, do you want to put anything of value in there, like some cash or something, no, just to say it's yours? It's fine, absolutely not a problem. It's very wet in there. The mark puts her watch in the box. It's a pretty nice one, but that's not what Paul's after. He wants cash. Unless she starts to play ball, the whole scam will have been a complete waste of time. Are you sure you want me holding on to your watch? It's very, it's getting dirty. I really don't like to do that. I need to hurry you along though because there's millions of things to do. The Mark takes her watch back. She's rapidly losing patience and this scam's just about to be going nowhere. Paul goes in for the kill. He needs to get through to her that if she doesn't place an item of great personal value in the box, she'll lose out on any further treasure buried in her back garden. The last haul was worth about 200,000. They lost all of that, and I felt that was very bad. I can put money in it if you want. Finally. Paul's suggestion of another recent find being worth over £200,000 seems to have grabbed the Mark's attention. And so long as your money stays in there, they say, nobody can take it off you. By putting cash in the box and having it photographed in situ, she'll then be able to claim it as hers. Well, do you want to do that now? Can I have the box and everything and I'll just 
do it the way it was before. You put in whatever it is you want to put in there. But I'm guessing the more it is, the less they can argue. Will that be okay? I will, I will, I promise. Paul lifts the delicate items from the table and puts them back in the box. And it looks like the mark has come up with the goods. That's £1,000. Oh, oh my goodness, that's a lot of cash. Um, Jay, do you have a camera? This one's rubbish. Oh, here, take that. Jazz brings his phone up to take the picture of the mark's cash sitting in the muddy box of treasure. Hey, my hands are a bit dirty. Sorry, that's okay. Thank you. That's clearly yours. Paul neatly folds the muddy cloth around the cash and other contents and hands the box to Jazz. I just want to take another photograph of it on the lawn and then we're done. Right. Do you want to come with us? We've pretty much checked everywhere here now. Hello. What's the ghost thing? Stella. Stella. Baby. Oh, that's a nice thing. You actually could you take that? Yeah, yeah. You're the right. three yeah. then head down to the garden to take that all important final photo. A shot of the box in the exact spot where it was dug up. So it doesn't come out, I don't think, any further than that. Right, do you boys want to go and get the markers, please? Oh, it got all wet. So the most important thing is, is that I leave it the way I found it. Bring that, uh, and it's entirely up to you what you do with it. Can you just do me one big, big, big favour? Don't tell anybody that we know about that, because we no, won't mention see. it. No, I wouldn't see anything about that, honestly. Was that it done? You've yeah. Done it then. So the Mark's happy. She thinks she's got a mysterious box of treasure that's just been dug up out of her lawn. She also thinks there's more loot buried there. And she also thinks her cash is safe inside the box. Wrong. Here's what really happened. The muddy cloth package containing the Mark's cash was switched by Jazz as the Mark headed over to metal detecting Marcus to gloat over the new find, as Paul pretended to take a photo of the Mark's cash in the box. Of course, there's nothing buried under those trees. Alex made sure the metal detector would go off by hammering some large nails in the ground when he buried the metal box. She's quite spirited. And there, was, there were points where I thought, oh, this is not, then we're, we're off. Paul went back for a, a third time, and I thought, is he serious? He a little tap on the window, as if he hasn't finished yet, and he was trying to get the box out. I, th I think doing this sort of thing for real is, is too nerve-wracking. You've got to have a real bottle. And it's devious, isn't it? And you're, you're constantly conning people, and that's just, there's no way to go through life, is it? So, so no, I'm not going to go head on into criminality, and I'm not going to go and sell my granny for a fiver after this, honest. <laughs> The mark in this scam didn't seem to have too much to lose. After all, what's the harm in putting some money in a box that she then gets to hold on to? Plus, she really wanted to get rid of that annoying council official. We need to be real here. What's the likelihood of buried treasure being in your garden? If officials come along and start asking you to dig up your garden or to come into your home, you have to ask them for identification. If they are genuine, they'll produce it immediately. If you've got any doubt whatsoever, ring the organisation they work for, the water board, the police force or whoever, but check them out thoroughly and don't allow them to start digging up your garden or coming into your home. 